Hi, everybody. Thank Good morning. You. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming to today's virtual goal setting workshop. Looking forward to 2021 with positivity. Today's, Sounds great. Today's workshop has been organized and put together by all of us here at SheTech, where our mission is to increase the number of women and allies in the tech staffing pipeline. At SheTech, we are so happy that we're able to create webinars and workshops where we get you actionable strategies for goal setting, negotiation, leadership, risk taking, and more. It's only through your contributions, questions, comments, and emails that we're able to keep growing the SheTech community into the best hub for women and allies in tech, a place where you can find a mentor, supportive network of others like you, career boosting resources, and more. Thank you so much to our SheTech community members that are here in attendance today. If you're not already a SheTech community member, come check us out after today's workshop. We'll share a link to the community with you at the end. I'm Meg Virig. I'm the program coordinator and community manager at SheTech, and I'll be your host today. We'll be recording today's workshop, and we'll post a link to the uh, recording uh, on the SheTech Tower community as soon as it's available. We'll also send you an email to let you know that it's live. You can also follow us on our YouTube channel, SheTech Global, where all our videos are posted, including past episodes of The Outlet and recent SheTech virtual conference. Right now, all our attendees should be muted by default. We'll have a time for Q&A with today's speakers after our talk and also within our breakout rooms. Uh, you can submit any questions within the Q&A or the chat box at the bottom of your screen. We'll let you know that we've got it and we'll get to those questions. Let's take a look at today's agenda. So you are here, just like in the shopping mall. We're at the welcome and housekeeping. Next, we're going to go into a bit of, we'll hand it over to our founder, Chaya Pamela, to give us a look back at SheTech in 2020 and at our plans for 2021. Then we'll meet today's speakers and coaches. We'll follow that intro with our interactive speaker session and get into smaller groups in our breakout rooms to discuss our goals and network. Finally, we'll gather back briefly in our main room to regroup and close out today's workshop. Chaya Pamela, SheTech's founder and the co-founder, CEO, and president of Hampton Inc., one of our sponsors here at SheTech. Chaya, would you like to tell us a bit about SheTech in 2020 and in the year ahead? Sure, Meg. Thank you so much um, for starting this uh, with such a great enthusiasm. Um, so you're an you're a, um, a energy ball, so you, you're needed here. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. First of all, Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, so as for some of you that don't know, what is SheTech? We, our mission is to increase the number of women represented in the technology industry. Uh, so we are running different programs and different activities. So just to give you an overview of 2020, so we produced about nine virtual career boosting webinars. Uh, and we also led many tech, tech training skills uh, programs um, and also we organized a virtual conference that led to two sessions. And then we grew the SheTech community. And now it's over 500 members. We are also uh, growing further. And our power team, which we also call as advisory board, uh, is now about 13 people on the advisory board. So we are also extending and expanding that ex advisory board. Um, I first of all would like to thank all our uh, team members and also our advisory board for all their help and support through 2020. And we are looking forward with positivity, obviously, for 2021. Can I go to the next slide, please? So for 2021 Outlook, um, there are many upcoming events and we're gonna continue on our outlet webinar series as we were doing in 2020, that will continue in 21. And also we are looking at job readiness training programs. There's actually one program coming up, which uh, I think Meg will be speaking about towards the end of the event. Um, there is a program that for the college students, uh, we're doing an innovation challenge that's coming up in the month of March. Uh, then we're also going to be providing trainings in artificial intelligence, machine learning, cybersecurity analyst training, data analytics, especially on the uh, click tool and then some web development training and help desk level one training, uh, also instructional design. So these are all placeholders that the, the um, dates might change, the months might change, but this is what we have planned for 2021. 
And then we are also looking at some mid-level courses in AI, ML, data engineering, and uh, cybersecurity endpoint security, some DevOps, Scrum, and cloud computing. So a lot of tech words for those who are not very familiar with technology. But the idea of SheTech is to encourage women uh, to get into technology, not to be so intimidated with technology. So most of these programs that we offer, the beginner programs, are all for women who don't have much technology background. We want to train them and get them ready for getting into the technology field. Um, next slide, please, Meg. So today we all know that we are assembled here for a um, webinar come workshop on goal setting. And uh, today with me, uh, I have uh, Maria Ramirez. She is our uh, a board member. And uh, Maria is the president and CEO of MFR Inc. And uh, uh, Maria, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And yeah. Michelle, Michelle Sakirka, she is our uh, president. Uh, she's the president and CEO of uh, New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Michelle is also on our board. Thank you, Michelle, for joining. Welcome. And we have Sally Nadler. Uh, she is uh, the uh, former, uh, former assistant dean and director uh, of Douglas Project for Women in STEM. And recently, Sally joined our board as well. Sally, thank you so much for joining us. And Sally will be uh, there uh, as a coach in our breakout rooms uh, as well, along with us. So let's get to get started with the webinar. So I would like to start saying that you know we all we all know. This is not just a webinar, this is also a workshop. So to develop your 2021 goals, uh, you know, it's easy to just grab your 2020 goals and change the titles and dates. Uh, so just say, you know, I'm done with the goals. But I, I recommend uh, you to try another way this time, right? especially after all the upheaval of 2020, uh, because it gave us an opportunity. In fact, it forced us to re-examine our goals, think differently out of the box, come up with plans, think about our careers, perspectives, even relationships for that matter. So I suggest you start with analyzing your accomplishments in 2020. So reflecting upon 2020 is very, very crucial before we jump into setting our goals for 2021. This will give you a, a new sense of your passion, uh, your priorities and strengths that you have today. And the current pandemic, economic and political affairs probably shifted uh, a lot of things for you, right? And many for many of us. So your reflection of 2020 is going to influence your 2021 goal setting from who you are and where you are today. So I encourage people to ask yourself, what did you find yourself enjoying the most in 2020? And what new skills did you learn or discover? What did you uh, do differently than what you were doing before? Uh, did you develop a new hobby? Uh, for example, you can see behind, uh, uh, behind me there is a painting. So I discovered my new skill, which is in arts and painting. I never thought I would be able to paint. I started and now I'm very obsessive about it. And it's, it's almost like therapeutic to me. So it could be something like a home improvement project, or it could be you developed interest in cooking, exercising, or some new skill or certification. So think about what is that you have done in 2020 that's different and how, why you want to continue that and can that be a goal for 2021? So did you, um, so you also have to probably, you have realized something that you can, you never thought that you would be able to do just like how it did about my painting. Um, so, but you felt that in 2020, you actually did, and you felt very good about it. Maybe that's something you can choose as your goal for um, 2021. See, one thing, because I'm involved in many projects, apart from my personal life, my two nonprofits, Softkin and um, SheTech, uh, I need to work with a plan. It's impossible for me to work without a plan, but many of you, you don't need to probably write down your goals. They're all in your head. That is fine. But I, for me, uh, you know, I need to put them on a paper, on a sheet. And then I have to start thinking about detailing my goals. Detailing goals is nothing other than creating your SMART goals. Uh, something, you know, that's simple, 
measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. That's what we call a smart goal. So today, what we are going to do is I will give you a couple of examples of how I set my goals, and then I, I will then defer to Maria and Michelle to share uh, their thoughts around this and their experience. So this is going to be a very interactive session, and we would encourage all of you to raise questions, ask questions. Um, and um, you know, if you are stuck, we have in the breakout rooms the coaches who would be helping you. So if I have to speak about my goals, right? Uh, I have. I always think about in a bigger picture what is that that matters to me, right? My personal life, definitely. All of us have to think about our personal lives, our health. That comes first. We need to be happy in our lives. So we thought we will, because we won't be able to cover everything in this workshop, we thought we would focus on three main areas. One is your personal goals, two, your professional goals, and three, social responsibility, because that's really big for me personally. So if you ask me, for me, my life revolves around my personal life, um, my family, my, it's me, and then also SheTech, Softkin, and my for-profit organization, Pamten. There's so much going on. So many lives are dependent on the decisions that we make, the jobs of people, right? So the decisions that we make need to be made with a plan. We cannot take hasty decisions. So how do I start my day? I start looking at what all I need to do and I start prioritizing my day. So first of all, I'll give you an example of setting up a, a goal. The way I do is I differentiate, okay, this is my personal, these are all my professional, these are social responsibility. Personal, I may want to develop a new skill, right? So what I thought is I developed this something, this whole painting thing, and I want to do more paintings. And I want to put them up for sale, and I want to get that money and donate it to my nonprofit. That's one of the goals I have for this year. And the other goal for my, uh, for my professional life is for Pampton, we are expanding into Montreal in Canada. What do I do to expand that business into Montreal? I need to understand the legalities. I need to um, un, you know, have meetings set up. So you need to really split down to those detailed goals in order for you to ensure that you are in the right track to reach your big goal. So th that's, the kind, that's the way I start setting up goals. When it comes to my nonprofit, for SheTech, we already have planned out for 2021 what we want to do. So this really helps to relax my mind, take away the stress, because every time I am pulled into multiple directions, I bring my focus back onto these goals that I have set for myself. And once we set these goals, we also these goals trickle down in the organization to the rest of the, the staff, employees in the organization. So then that is all tied back into performance reviews. So this, that's the beauty of setting the goals up front. So I will stop talking with that. And then I would like to defer to let's Michelle. And Michelle, would you want to share your experience and how you set up goals? Sure, thank you. Um, thanks so much, Chai. It really is a pleasure to, to join you today. And you know, especially the whole idea of coming into 2021 with, with positivity. Um, and we tried to do that at NJBIA. Um, I'll, I'll start with the, with the professional because we have a strategic planning process as an organization. Um, and it starts, it's, it's top down and bottoms up. And so I have a, a leadership team or executive team and we retreat probably three or four times. And, and we did through COVID and we um, felt comfortable enough. We have a very large um, conference room at BIA called our Innovation Zone. Um, and there's you know eight of us and we felt we could be in the Innovation Zone safely. And so we did go on site uh, to, do our, to do our retreating. Um, it really did make, it made a difference. And so I have to say, if you can keep yourself safe in your connections, you know, tr try to connect if you can. And if not, we make the best in this, in this world. And we make this, we make this work because we have to, and we must, right. But so we retreat as a team and we do exactly, we, we look at what we accomplished in 2020. We look at what was left on the table and we ask why, uh, sometimes we left things on the table because, um, we couldn't control it. 
uh, and COVID threw us all a whammy, right? And so we had certain uh, programs um, or services we wanted to roll out in 2020 that we just couldn't do because uh, we found ourselves, you know, mixed into this crazy, crazy new world. Um, but in that, when we realized what we had to leave on the table, we stepped back and said, but what else did we gain that we didn't plan on gaining? And I could tell you that 2020 for BIA, we were able to validate and solidify um, our role uh, as a trusted um, advisor and collaborator. We've always known that we're at the center and the heart of matter, not just for business, but bringing together, as Sally and I were talking earlier, academia and government for things like workforce development and job creation, right? But we found early on in COVID that we became the 24-7 call center for our members to be there in time, helping them to um, understand how executive orders impacted them because it was very confusing. Am I allowed to be open? How do I operate? Can my staff be on? The HR questions were through the roof. And so literally for the first three to four weeks, we were a 24-7 call center, present company included. I took every one of those calls as well, and we fielded thousands and thousands of calls. Then we immediately translated that into being a resource for our members, and we stood up uh, webinars. Uh, and throughout the end of the year, those webinars, and sure, did we do programs before? Absolutely, but we did a handful of them live, right? We've done, um, my gosh, I think 100 webinars. We've hosted over 30,000 individuals uh, on our webinars. And this was all about helping people with the end-time resources they needed to, um, to the challenges they were facing you know, in COVID. And then our role as collaborator, we said everyone looks to us to be at the center of something. And so we stood up the New Jersey Business Coalition. And that was bringing together 100 business associations and nonprofit leaders uh, to lead policy all through COVID. And through that, we stood up a, a recovery and reinvention framework document that we presented to the governor's office. And, and so, you know, while we were sidelined on our original strategic plan, we immediately went to, and this is important, right, because we have the culture to do this. We have a teamwork and trusting culture at BIA at the heart of what we do. And so we were able to, to pivot on that strong foundation that we built in order to lean into challenge and say, what is it that we're best at? You know, those of you who've heard me speak before when I do goal setting, and this is personally with my team, we look for our sweet spot. And the sweet spot is the, the confluence or the intersection of what am I best at, what am I passionate about, and what drives the economic engine. And for an organization, when you take those three concentric circles and you overlay them, in the center, you find the sweet spot. And we call the focus on that is the hedgehog. And anybody who knows Jim Collins and um, Good to Great, right? I am, I'm surrounded by, by hedgehogs. I've got them all, all over my desk. And it's the idea of keeping focused. And so to me, one really important thing is focus. Now, as I look forward into 2021, what does focus mean? I have to think of that in a different way in my skill setting. And this is personal and professional because what I found in this Zoom world, I am easily distracted because I'm a multitasker. And I learned that my behavior wasn't very good in staying focused on a Zoom meeting while I'm doing this at the same time, right? And all of a sudden, I'd be three quarters of the way through a meeting. I'm like, I just missed a major point. Oh my gosh, what do I do, right? So now I know and I learned from my behaviors through this world that my goal, uh, professional goal, combined with personal bit, but, but to make me a better professional is I have to stop multitasking in 2021. I have to pay attention to Zoom calls. Very difficult for me, but I'm doing it. Okay. Um, and so that's, you know, that's learning from behavior and, and leaning in and turning that into goal. The one more thing I want to say, uh, maybe there's two, is when I set goals uh, looking forward, there's uh, mental and physical. Okay. Um, the mental is the focus that I just talked about. I know what I need to do mentally to keep myself and be mindful and be in the game. Right. However, I know that um, I have to have uh, physical fitness goals. Because when I get up in the morning, this morning, I, I hit my treadmill. If I don't get that, right, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a house down at the shore. Also, when I'm there, I go out 90 minutes in the morning, walk, run, bike ride, fresh air. Okay. If I don't do that, I'm coming. I'm, I'm not clear. I'm not clear minded. And then I certainly can't be focused. Okay. The last thing is when I wake up every single morning, I put my feet on the floor, right? I got to bring my passion to the game. And if I don't have um, some good priorities set and if I'm not focused and I can get my physical uh, fitness in, right, uh, my passion will be uh, waning. And everyone relies on me bringing passion to the game when I'm advocating for the business community. And so these things all play together, not just in the goals we set, but how we set them and the filter through which we set them. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you very much. Maria? Sure. Um, hi, everyone, and a happy new year to all. Uh, I think it, it's good to have um, this chat um, today, uh, the second week of uh, January. 
as we gear up for uh, another year, hopefully not as challenging as um, 2020 was. Uh, we kind of um, got used to most of us um, being efficient, working at home. Uh, and hopefully um, by the middle of the year, uh, we're all going to be um, working in a similar environment that we were working in a year ago. Uh, but I think, you know, looking back in 2020, um, we, we, we kind of may do with the best possible situation that um, was handed to us, uh, with, with, you know, a, a big surprise. So I think that you know, to the extent that, you know, we are healthy and uh, we feel bad about those that are no longer with us. Um, we, you know, we survived quite a challenge in the last year. And to the extent that, uh, you know, we, we have um, income, we, we have a business uh, that's still around, we really are the lucky few because many businesses haven't had that opportunity to survive um, this pandemic. So I think that, you know, I look at uh, goals on a, a rolling basis. You know, January 1st is a date, but if you have a business like I do, it's like constantly changing. So goals are good to the extent that you have flexibility in them and you could adopt. And not all of us or all the businesses are the same. Uh, I think that in, in the corporate structure with, with larger companies, uh, it's totally different because you have quarter to quarter earnings. Um, you have uh, goals that are very, um, you know, numerical uh, that you have to meet, but in smaller businesses, uh, it's totally different. And I think for individuals is also, you know, your, your destiny is not necessarily up to you in the short term is the companies that you work for and the customers that you work for if you're on your own. So I'm a strong believer in um, having goals, but also being flexible and being realistic. You know, uh, being on the board of a hospital, a bank, insurance company um, involved with you, you know, for profits and non for profits. If you're in the hospital business, you could have had great goals last year, but very difficult to meet them when you had to survive in the environment that you were in. You know, less people are going to hospitals and, um, you know, other things are happening in insurance companies, life insurance. Unfortunately, more people are passing away. So that has its own repercussions in banking. Interest rates are very low. Uh, so it, it's, you know, a challenge to meet some expectations. So I think that goals are different um, in, 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 and they're affected by the world we live in. Uh, we could have great goals, but if the world around us and the economy around us does not afford those opportunities, then you got to figure out yourself, you figure out your skill set. And I think, you know, it, 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 what you're doing, uh, Chaya, with this is great because we are constantly in the search of improving our skill set. And technology has been a big part of being able to survive last year. I mean, we wouldn't have been doing Zoom calls all day. And Michelle, you talked about, you know, the focus and being able uh, to, you know, uh, kind of... Uh, adopt when we are always multitasking. It's not easy. But I do think that three things are important. You know, we, we have um, career goals. Uh, we have financial goals. Uh, we have a give back uh, goals or participating the best way we can in helping others. So I kind of, you know, put those together in kind of a different silos. And my day is split up that way. You know, I, I, I do what I, I can in mentoring. I was mentoring a young man, uh, uh, a student at Rutgers for the last hour, he was a finance major, but he started doing some, you know, day trading a year ago. He's learning a lot, but he needed some mentoring. So I, I, I spent an hour talking to him today. You know, I, I spent two hours talking to the hospital earlier. So I think that it really depends on where you are in your life how much time you have that you could share for benefiting others and giving back. There is so much time that you have 
for your business, for your career. And I think those goals are, it's a post that's constantly changing, but you constantly have to update your game. Uh, you have to up your game to be competitive, uh, to be uh, looking ahead as what is the next thing that could help me because what helped me last year is not going to help me this year. So kind of figure out the environment that you're in in terms of your job, your position, and what can you set as a goal that's very high and try to not only achieve it, but at the end of you know the period, one year, two years, surpass that goal. I always think of something impossible to do and then do it. It is like the best satisfaction in terms of mental therapy. So my goal this year, I started a new business. I hired uh, two new people. I am going to give it all to support them, to make sure that they are successful in this new business that I started because it's a tough business and I wanna make sure that they succeed and their success is my satisfaction and I will achieve my goals. So sometimes it's not just what you want to achieve for yourself, but how you make others successful, whether they are your employees, they're, they're your career, how you promote someone that's a system vice president to vice president. What can you support them with so that they achieve their goals? So you could term it as a, a, a give back or mentorship or whatever, but I don't care what you call it. It's not just what you could do for yourself or help your clients, but what can you do for others? No matter where you are, there's someone that's trying to look up to you. So think of others that look up to you just as you look up to others that help you to succeed at whatever it is that you're aiming for. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a combination of things that we all aspire to do. You know, we want to be healthy. We want to learn how to do other things. And, you know, I always turn something negative into something positive. You know, years ago, I fell, I broke my ankle and I was stuck without being able to walk a lot. So I learned how to do jewelry. So I made so much of it. And um, I gave it to a charity in Brazil, which was an orphanage. And they auctioned it off and they raised a lot of money. Uh, I still have a lot of beads, but I have to do more of it. <laughs> but I have to be inspired. So I think with your child and your painting, you know, these things are, we were inspired. We're passionate about doing something and we go at our 100%. So we have to go at our 200%, but we still have that passion because, you know, two years from now, we may get tired of the beads or the painting, and then we go on to something else. So I think that what I learned from being at home and working at home is that I could do a lot more being at home than being at the office because I don't waste as much time um, doing things that are not um, productive, whether it's other people coming to my office or people visiting or people traveling through New York and stopping by. And, um, you know, the day goes by and, and you said it's five o'clock. I just have to start doing what I was supposed to do at nine o'clock. So I think that I, I learned to manage my time better, but the longer hours afford me the flexibility to do more things on the weekends because I'm not traveling. So there are benefits to not going to the airports, you know, not traveling and uh, cooking more at home, which I enjoy a lot, which I think it's a lot healthier. So um, I'm not sure whether I gave a, a great outline for the three things, but it's a combination of the three things plus depends on depending on where you are in your career, what you want to achieve and how we can help you achieve all those things. Thank you, Maria and um, Michelle. Great points from both of you. Um, you know, I do agree, you got to be flexible when you um, are, you know, defining your goals. Another thing that's very important is that there's, there are goals that are so much within your control and there can be goals that there are dependencies, right? So you, you depend on others. So you need to make sure 
others are successful to make sure you're making progress. So I really like those uh, points. And, uh, and Michelle, I, I agree with you. It is so much that we deal with in a day. And uh, it, it, in order to be able to prioritize and then start thinking about how do I distinguish my personal goals, professional goals, and then be able to, it's one person, right? You have to deal with all of these things. So how do you organize yourself uh, and take control on things within your control and then start pulling these resources together to start planning. So all great uh, discussion. So I want to ask um, Meg how we are doing on the time, if we have time for Q&A. Well, um, we're doing all right on the time. Uh, we don't have any current questions from anybody in the audience. I'd love to invite everybody to maybe send over a question. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to type to us in the chat or in the Q&A box. Uh, maybe we can open the um, you know, microphone so they can just ask the question that's, if, if that's easy. Mm -hmm. And Chaya, can I, can I share something? It's, it's really a simple thing. And this is not, I, I, I read this or heard this somewhere. It's about, a con, you know, having some goals that are so small that just the feeling of accomplishment makes you feel good to move on to something else. And the easiest thing that we can control every day, this sounds so silly, but it makes such a difference when you get up in the morning, right? Make your bed. <laughs> yeah. This is the, I'm telling you, it sounds like the silliest thing, but I thought about it after I heard it and I said, Oh my God, you know, when I make my bed, I'm leaving order behind as I go to what I have to do. And there's such a sense of accomplishment from it because it's like, it's done. It was easy, right? And it sounds so trivial and, trivial and so silly, but I would, I would challenge people to pick something that simple, right? You know, and, and then look back and go, wow, I accomplished that this morning. I'm on to the next thing. And actually something that silly and trivial gives you the energy to like move on to something else. Very true, Michelle. And we were taught right from childhood to make our bed <laughs> when we get up. That's how you start the day, right? So I, it just gives you that feeling of calmness. And Absolutely. 100% agree. Yeah. Do we have um, any questions? I mean, you can unmute yourselves if you have any questions. We're going to give a couple of more minutes for questions. And if not, we'll move to the next segment. We just had one individual send us over a question. Um, they wanted to know, uh, Maria is that another Maria is asking us today if any of you have ever struggled with reaching a goal and how you can get over feeling maybe disappointed or uh, other maybe negative feelings if you fail to achieve a goal. Ty, do you want to start with that? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I mean, I, 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 I always say don't be so critical on yourself. Right, so we are all humans. Failure is expected to happen, um, but I think what I would I would do is I won't wait until it's a surprise to me. I try to keep monitoring my progress and try to see what my hurdles are and try to change my direction. So we got, as Maria said earlier, we have to be flexible enough to change your direction and to start um, being more realistic. That's why in the next exercise, we're gonna talk about smart goals. How can you be more relevant and realistic goals? How can you build those that are achievable? Not, you know, aspire. I mean, it's good to aspire something very for something very high. It's good to have high aspirations and big goals. Uh, go for 200%, that's fine. But I think we also have to be realistic and continue to monitor and not being as a surprise at the last minute I think we need to be start more looking at them and then shift our direction and adjust our goals as we need to. And I would say, don't be critical. In fact, you should celebrate your progress. Yep. Agree. <laughs> I, I think I definitely don't dwell on the negatives. If it doesn't work out, you have all the goals, you move on. Well, maybe you learn about what part of that um, goal that you were reaching for didn't work. Sometimes it's not up to you. You know, maybe you're working on developing a, a client, their relationship, and then, you know, um, those things don't work out. I mean, I had some of my clients that passed away this year. I mean, uh, I had great friends that are no longer uh, around and they were a big part of my life, a big part of my business, big part of my success. Um, so you, you, you have to adapt to other things that are doable 
and sometimes just ignore and move on to, for those from those things that were outside of your control. There are some things that are within your control, within your ability to have an impact. And there are some things the world around you changes. So you just have to be able to move on in a positive way. Yeah, I, I, I would just round that all up by saying turn any challenge into an opportunity because for every challenge, there is an opportunity. And that's the whole idea of leaning in. Um, when something negative is coming to you, you know, what is that? I, it's funny, my very first day at BIA, I had a town hall and I wanted everyone to know the type of person, the type of leader I am. And I, I told everyone that I have zero tolerance for negative energy, zero tolerance for negative energy. And so if something is wrong, come and tell me, but bring a solution with it because every challenge has an opportunity embedded in it and we can get to the other side of it. I agree. Excellent point. Yep. So if we don't have any more questions, I think um, we can get to the uh, next segment. Sure thing. Did you want to um, did you want to lead us through the visioning exercise now, or did you want us to start moving towards the breakout rooms? Uh, no, we will start the visioning, okay. and then at least people can write their big goals. So now we are getting into more action, a workshop mode. Uh, so before that, I'm a big, uh, pro, you know, believer in uh, a little bit of uh, calmness and focus, uh, some kind of meditation. I'm not an expert, uh, but I have attended uh, several and I have also lately uh, brought that into my personal life because my the moment I lie down on the bed, my mind just starts to wander around about everything that is, I should have done in the day, which I didn't do. So I started to listen to this instruction, guide, guided meditation. So I, what I want to do is just for a few minutes, all of us to just focus our minds. So we will be writing our big goals for the year. So let's focus on it. So, um, so what, my, uh, what I suggest is slowly, um, you can turn off your cameras if you're not comfortable. You can just do this, turning off your cameras as well. Um, so please sit upright in your chair or sofa, wherever you're sitting. Gently close your eyes. Or have a soft gaze at the floor. And become aware of the space you are in. Now start to observe your breath. Take a long, deep inhale. And out a long exhale. Try to do this at least three times. Begin to notice the physical touch points of your body contacts. Start to feel your weight on the chair or the cushion that you're sitting on. Notice your legs touching the floor. Notice your back against the chair. Notice your arms touching the chair or in your lap. Bring your attention to these physical sensations. While you continue to inhale and exhale. You may notice that your mind is wandering, many thoughts entering your mind. Let the thoughts come and go. Gently bring your attention back to the breath.
Continue to breathe normal. Inhale and exhale. Start to relax. Drop your shoulders. Smoothen the expression on your face. Feel your body weight sinking down. Just relax. Inhale all that positive energy from the universe into your system. Exhale all that positive energy back into the universe. Just focus on the breath. If your mind is wandering again, gently bring the focus back onto your breath. Just be aware of being aware to your natural senses. Just be in a field of infinite potential. The universe is open for you. You have all the resources that you want. Just take that potential. Just be aware of your inner potential. Rest in being. Be in that awareness. Just feel this vast universe around you. Be there. Just be aware. Feel that calmness. Feel your sensory organs. Be aware of the breath. Just be there. Now try to open your eyes gently and come back to this awareness of the external world. Open your eyes gently. Welcome back. Hope this was helpful before you go into the big exercise. Hope your minds are calm and you're able to focus. So what we would like to do is now, I'm sure you all have the worksheets that were shared 
by Meg. So open those worksheets and we would like you to start writing down your three big goals under these three categories, personal goals, professional goals, social responsibility. So you don't have to write all the three. This is just um, a tool that we provided to you to write something there. You can, some of you might just write two goals, that is fine. Before we get to the breakout rooms, so at least have a framework so our coaches can help you to um, detail out your goals. Um, so if once you start writing, if anybody would like to share, a couple of examples would definitely help others. Um, Meg, can we bring that sheet uh, up on the screen? Sure thing. Give me just a moment. Uh, it may, uh, if people find themselves running into each other on the worksheet, you may need to download a copy. You can do that by going to file and then save as. You can save a copy on your own computer. You can also find this worksheet if uh, you need to come back to it later. If you lose my link here, it'll be available on the SheTech resources page as well. In the SheTech community itself. So if anybody needs help to identify these big goals, I think it's, uh, as I said, we want to keep it as an interactive session. So if someone has any ideas they want to share. Uh, so then we will go into the breakout rooms to write down the SMART goals where our coaches would be able to help you. And I see Chitra. Thank you, Chitra, for joining. He also offered to help uh, coaching on the goals. Chitra is Chaya. on the board. Hi, Chitra. Yes, that was very refreshing. Thank you for leading us through that session. Thank you. I, I, I'm not sure how I did it, but I did it. <laughs> I didn't realize you had a, such a calming voice. <laughs> Usually you and when you and I talk, we are going <laughs> at <a> high intensity. <laughs> so this was good. So do we have anyone? Uh, I think everybody is uh, unmuted, right, Meg? If anybody wants to um, share their goals. Yes, I have uh, sent the invite out to everybody to unmute themselves. You can unmute yourself in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Okay. You see it, just throw your mouse over there and it'll pop up the option for you. So don't be shy to share your goals um, unless, you know, you don't have to share the secret goals, but if you have anything that you want to share, it would definitely help other participants. We are just looking at the top goals, the big goals. And it's also good to understand why that goal is important to you. Do you have any volunteer? Uh, Chaya, this is Sally. I'll go ahead and share a goal. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Sally. All Thanks. right. Um, so great session so far. And I, like Michelle, like physical activity and um, have had personal fitness goals every year for years. So um, my fitness goal for this year is to walk five miles a day, uh, at, which it equates to having done this many years, talk about SMART goals being simple, but specific and measurable. Five miles is about 12,000 steps. So you, you kind of know the progression and it illustrates a progression, maybe from 2019 to 2020, you get the Fitbit, you shoot for 8,500 steps a day, then 10,000. And then once you get that, do you, okay, well, how many years are you going to walk 10,000 steps or do you push it? So for 2021, it's 12,000 steps a day with uh, 
five miles. It's specific, measurable, it's achievable, um, you, you know, as long as uh, I remain healthy. And the thing about this goal and some personal goals is it's within my own purview. It's within my own frame of reference to complete this. I don't really need outside support for this particular goal. Professional goals, that's different. Hey, Sally, that, can, I, it, can I add to that? Because, sure. you know, some people think I, I'm in a stage in my life right now. My, my children are grown. I have, I have my mother living with me. So I'm in a different life transition. Right? But some people feel that um, how do I find the time to do that? I always think about when I was young with children and we, you know, we should not feel guilty about making time for ourselves. In fact, it is critical and incumbent that we make time for ourselves. In fact, schedule it on your calendar if you have to. OK, and um, anybody who works for you or with you will understand that you need to do that, because, again, in this home environment, the flexibility, uh, you're working later hours and your world is gray between home and work uh, that affords you flexibility. Get out of the women guilt of giving yourself the time to do this, because you're going to hurt yourself more on the other side mentally if you don't make the time. Literally put it on your calendar, block out that time. Right, Sally? And Absolutely. Or, you know, schedule it into your day if you don't keep a calendar because yeah. you have the opportunity or the lifestyle where you don't have to keep a calendar for everything. Still work it into your day. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, um, it's making yourself a priority. I think that we spend so much in taking care of others' needs and at least once a month. Um, it is my goal to do something purely for myself. Now, I'm, I'm not the person that goes for facial, facials or nails or massage, but I'm going to make it my goal to do something simply for myself. I, you know, I'll, I'll figure out exactly you know how to go about it and what day of the week and the weekends, what have you. But it's going to be at least one hour a month only for myself. That's really good. Yeah. I mean, as Michelle said, you should not feel guilty to take care of yourself. Yeah. I encourage everybody to do the same if they're not doing it already, uh, because that re-energizes us. And I really like uh, the little meditation. I think that's something that I could do that easily, like once a day, you know, a little breathing and relaxing. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I didn't realize until I started practicing it, just the breathing itself, focusing on your breathing itself just changes so much, you know, in your, your mental ability gets really strong. You're able to focus, be more productive. Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. My name is Mel, and um, I would like to um, research something to do for myself or um, a small service business in the post-emerging um, market, post-COVID emerging market. So that's my goal, my professional goal, and that's what I'm looking into. That's awesome. So you're actually pivoting and trying to do something different. Yes. So is that clear? I mean, are you able to put your goals down um, related to that, Mel? Well, I actually, I just started, but um, this was also um, very motivating. This, this session was very motivating, and um, it gives me some ideas to continue, continue looking, researching. Yeah, you know, um, from the business point of view, one thing I would say is if you really want to do something, the first thing, you know, my advisors always told me, and I'm sure Maria would smile to this, think of the problem you're trying to solve, right? What right. are you trying to offer? What problem you're going to solve? And who are the audience? I think you start asking those questions. Those responses would help you where to focus your research on. Thank you. Sure. I don't know if Maria, Michelle. What I, yeah, what, what I would add is 
whatever um, service or whatever business um, activity you're trying to do, uh, reach out to others, uh, whether it's the circle today, um, which I'm sure that, you know, Michelle could be, you know, helpful to you that Michelle is more exposed to all kinds of businesses. Um, uh, reach out to others to help you. You, you don't re need to reinvent the wheel by yourself, but you could take advantage of others that have kind of, you know, gone it in a similar route and um and it will accelerate um you know th the goals that you're trying to reach uh, i'm trying to be general but i always you know go to people that you know have been there done that what can i learn from others and i i say the same thing to younger people you know i i you know if it's a, a field that i know i said look i i have done this so many times and I have made so many mistakes. I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. You should benefit from other people's experiences and mistakes so that in addition to making your own, you don't make the ones that other people make uh, made before. So uh, be generous in asking for help. Thank you. Great point, yeah. All right. Well. Thank you all so much for sharing all these great goals with us. Uh, I feel personally really honored that you guys have chosen to share these goals with us because I know that that's very personal. Um, now we'd like to, so that we just we stay on time, we're going to want to move into our break. Uh, I, actually, I would like to share one of my goal. I'm Aruna here. Okay. Uh, my goal as well as I wanted to share my problem too. Uh, my goal is like, to do the one course which is really I'm interested in and also helpful in my professional growth which is FRM similar to MBA. I have plan uh, and I have the related books what I need to study for that and all the information I gathered but my effort is not uh, continuous like one day I'll study and the next day I have to see the kids homework or a day of extended meetings at office work. So I couldn't able to spare good time and I'm demotivating myself when I'm not able to contribute good time and not able to reach as per my plan in my timetable. Thanks Aruna for sharing. Um, Michelle, do you, do you want to jump on it? Yeah, no, I, I this, all of these um, and, and similar here um, and that whole idea of professional development and what's the next step that you need to advance your career is significantly important. Um, and same thing, talking to talking to people, though, as Maria said a minute ago, talking to people about what those right next steps um, might be so that you know you're heading in the right direction. Um, sometimes we, we think we know what the next best step, uh, be it degree or plan is. I, I just went through uh, this with a young person on my staff who actually thought she was heading in one, one direction. And when she talked to some people about what it was she was actually looking to accomplish at the other end of her her. Uh, graduate type of work, she realized that there was a total different degree that was more apt for what she was uh, what she was looking to do. And so this, along with what Melanie said before, and what what uh, Maria responded to, uh, asking people around you and always having your own kind of private board of advisors, trusted souls, uh, who you could go to to give you uh, give you guidance and, and inspiration um, as well. Yeah, I agree, Michelle. Support is very, very important. And the other thing, um, Aruna, what I would uh, add on to it is sometimes we set the goals thinking that we have the time for it, right? So we set the goal and we start getting disappointed that we're not able to achieve that goal. I think we need to be really realistic when we set our goals. So if you have certain time you need to allocate to your children and to work, it may be, you know, you need to adjust your goal and accommodate the time and, and say that, okay, this is not prob probably the amount of time that I have, I only have little time. So extend mm -hmm. your time timeline for that goal, right? And maybe you thought that you will get certification or finish a program by next month. And then you realize you're not able to give the time extend it to for one more month. So that's why I keep saying, you know, I used to be very critical on myself, right? I used to really bombard myself that, hey, I'm not doing this. That only adds more demotivation to you. Mm -hmm. So I would say accommodate all that, what you have in your regular schedule. And then work life balance is hard. <laughs> there's no there's no magic answer, ladies, right? I mean, I say all the time, I've read every self-help book on work life balance. My twins are 29 years old. Uh, and when they were young, I thought there was some magic potion out there and there just isn't. And you know, 
right? You find like a certain point in your life, one thing is a priority today, something else is a priority tomorrow, um, depending upon where you are in your stage of life and follow your instinct and your gut on those things. And you probably can't go wrong. <laughs> They're all juggling with a thousand different things, right? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yes. Was that yeah. helpful enough? Yes, yeah, definitely the point of, you know, accommodating, stretching. Like if I wanted to give the exam by July 2021, instead of doing that, maybe I can push that to give it to December. So I will not lose my goal at, and then I have some extra time to push myself. Yeah. There's also a nice, you know, a balance there, right? So you don't want to keep on pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To find your balance, yeah. Yes. Thank you so much to everyone. Sure. Good luck. Thank you. All right, great. So thank you very much, everybody. Again, thank you also, Aruna, for sharing that with us. I'm going to start by moving us into some breakout rooms now where we can discuss maybe our visions, our goals. We can get to know some other members of the SheTech community and, you know, just maybe spend some time together and really get to know each other a little bit closer. So if everybody just stands by for just a moment and we'll all get uh, switched in. Bear with me just a sec. Mm -hmm. All right, um, what will happen is I'm going to send everybody out and then I'm going to redistribute our speakers and coaches to the rooms. So just stand by and I'll make sure that everybody's all good, okay? Three, two, one. So how, how were the breakout rooms? Were they helpful? Very good. Good, good. Okay. So anybody wants to share? We ran out of time. We got cut off, but it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish it was 10 minutes longer. And I didn't realize it, uh, how time flies. It's oh, We are already almost close to one and a half hour that we spent for the session. And I just thought, oh, oh we just locked in a couple of minutes back. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could do a mid-year check-in. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, a lovely, exactly. Lovely idea. Yeah. We all felt it's the time is very short, but again, you know, everybody has so many different commitments and we don't want to hold up everyone for too long. Uh, but I think the idea really today is to give you a flavor of what it is setting your goals, give some direction and some guidance and share each other's goals. So that'll help. Um, then you can write your goals and we'll have a touch point. So anyone else wants to share? The only thing I would add, Chaya, is we, we had in our group um, some commonality in terms of where people are in their um, phase of life right now relative to employment and maybe not so much employment. And so there were some connections made today and there's a lot of resources for people and uh you know, please feel feel free to reach out and take advantage. Uh, I think we learned in our group that SheTech has a lot of resources that folks in our breakout could benefit from. Uh, and we talked about in-demand jobs and going after certifications uh, for in-demand jobs as well. So uh, don't don't hesitate to, you know, take action from today, not only with your goals, but to follow up with people you met today uh, to help with your support on, on achieving your goals. Yeah, that's a great advice, Michelle. And I also encourage everyone to join the community because uh, we are also going to be giving you some opportunities uh, for people to mentor others, also to receive mentorship. Um, then we know even uh, uh, members of our advisory board and many other members on, in the community are ready to help each other. So you will be able to find mentors. So ask for join help. This, sorry. Yeah, Rina, sorry. How to join this community, Chaya? Uh, just like how you joined uh, other communities on Bisligo. So get to okay. SheTech.net. I think Maggie is going to talk about this uh, towards the end. You okay. get to SheTech.net website. There's a community. Just go there and register and join the community. Thanks, Chaya. Yeah, sure. There is so much potential in SheTech uh, community, I tell you. Very successful women. You know, one thing I would add, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yes. So <laughs> don't be shy about asking and, um, you know, just make, make your goals um, achievable uh, in the sense that if it, at the first try things don't work out, you know, keep on trying. 
I'm longing to hear somebody's goal. Someone at least share some goal. So I feel that the workshop helped. <laughs> Anyone wants to share? Barbara, did you come over? Barbara's goal was popular in our group. Do you mind oh. putting you on the spot? Uh, I don't mind. I was just fiddling with the audio stuff. Uh, my goal is to get the CISSP certification this year uh, because I pivoted to cybersecurity in the past couple of years, but didn't come in with the certification already. So uh, that's my goal for the year. And I already told my colleagues, so they're going to hold me to it. Great. That's, great. that's a great point, right? Having people that hold you to your goal, right? Yeah. So that's something that you're at the track and you're going to get back on track. Right. And putting it out there in the universe. Yeah. Is she tech a, um, in like an employment agency or something where you assist with employment and resources for, for job search? What, what, what exactly is, is this company? So she tech is a nonprofit organization. So we are, we are trying to bridge the gap between your academia and the work, right? So we're trying to build that skill set that is required to be job ready. So we will definitely assist through our relationships to find the job, but our main goal is to get you up to speed and be job ready so you can be successful in finding careers. So we do have a job posting section in Sheetek community. So you will get to see the jobs that are posted and we also can help you to find a job. Do you have help with resume review? Yes, in fact, um, we are planning for a workshop uh, in future for helping people to go through some mock interviews and help you with the resume building. So if you join the community, you can put out that question and one of our members would come and uh, try to help you uh, to review your resume and give feedback. Thanks. Sure. Please do stop by and use that great discussions area as a great way to talk to the other members of SheTech. I have a bit that I can say about SheTech if you like, Chaya, just to uh, start mm -hmm. moving us out and get everybody a bit more familiar with us. Sure. Great. So before we go, oh, wait, let me pop up my share before I lose it. Screen two. I want everybody to get this URL for a follow up conversation so we can keep this great conversation going. So come join us over at the SheTech Tower community. We're over at SheTech.net or that SheTechDubDisLego.com link that I popped into there. Our mission is to, again, increase the number of the women and allies in the tech staffing pipeline. And we do this through engaging, empowering, and employing women who are just like you. Uh, between our community's active discussion board, the SheTech community's downloadable resources, like today's goal setting worksheet or past episodes of the outlet, and top tech employment opportunities from around the United States, we are dedicated to supporting women and allies in their tech careers in any way that we can. As we mentioned at the start of today's workshop, we'll be hosting Blueprint the Future, an innovation competition for community college students across New Jersey with Felician University in March. Teams of up to five students will collaborate to develop a solution to a problem that we're all facing today with an eye towards social responsibility. Make sure to join SheTech to get all the upcoming news about Blueprint the Future and other SheTech events. After you join us, update your SheTech profile. It's a great way to find a mentor or let us know that you'd like to mentor someone else. It'll also help us continue to grow SheTech into the best community for women and allies in tech on the net. Thank you so much for everyone who joined us today and thanks to our guest speakers and coaches. Join us over at that bit.ly slash SheTech Goals FDBK link. So that way then you can join us to talk about what you learned today maybe share a goal share with us your strategies follow us on social media and in the community and i hope to see you all again soon thank you very much to all of you thanks a lot it's fresh thanks. to everyone thank you everyone good luck for 2021 and uh, thanks for your participation and also thank you maria uh, michelle sally uh, for being there. Um, thanks so much, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Meg. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Chai and Michelle and, and everyone. I appreciate it. It was nice to meet you all. And it's, I'm so lucky I found you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>